We're going to be starting off a little bit different today. Where you want it? Bay 12, please. Hello there Transformers fans and welcome back to another Bay 12 video review and today we are reviewing the new Transformers Legacy United and the first leader class figure within the new year of Legacy, Transformers Beast Wars Tiger Hawk. This is my number one favorite Maximal. Tiger Hawk is so awesome. He is such a bad dude. This is this is a character you do not mess with. You do not step to this guy. He is one of the most powerful single Cybertronian Transformer, whatever you want to call him, beings ever. And that's simply because he was juiced by the Vok. So the combination of both Tigatron and Air Razor fused together by the Vok to create a powerful warrior imbued with their energy-like power to stop Megatron from disrupting the space-time continuum, having already messed up a lot of their experimentation on Earth anyway. So they, they kind of had a vendetta. They went a little overkill when they came up with Tiger Hawk because Tiger Hawk not only can manipulate energy around him and fire incredible bursts of energy. He can also manipulate weather and other matter, creating crazy natural disaster level storms at will. It, it, it's He's an incredibly powerful character. And he looks really cool. They absolutely nailed it with this figure release, in my opinion. Look at how amazing and screen accurate he is. Now, I know there were a lot of collectors who really dug the original toy. I'm one of those collectors. I love, love, love the original Tiger Hawk toy. If you had asked me, hey, here's a long list of Beast Wars characters. Who do you think really needs an update? And who do you think could wait till later? Well, Tiger Hawk's probably gonna be on that wait till later list because the toy is still pretty great. And in my opinion, holds up to this day. How Ever, then they showed off the new one, okay? And the new one, while the original is great, and here it is for comparison, here is the original Tiger Hawk, so you can see the two side by side. They're very comparable in size, too. They're very similarly scaled, although I think the proportions on this one were a little bit better, too. Um, this one's just way more screen accurate. While this, while this one is great, and it still is, and I love this toy, and I am still going to keep it in my collection because I'm so attached to it. Like I said, it's one of my favorite characters and such a great toy. They, they took all of the design inaccuracies of this toy and some of the things that made it great and incorporated it into this one right here. And what we got as fans is very incredible. Are there still some, you know, hollow bits here and there somewhere? A little, you know, like you know, right, right here is probably the most notable and noticeable hollow bits on this figure, but there aren't really that many. And once again, very screen accurate, especially on that head sculpt. That shoulder is much better. You know, they shrunk down the big orb just a little bit because it's not supposed to be so huge on the figure like it was. You've got his cannons just like he did on the original toy and in the cartoon. You can take the other cannons off. What I like about this one too is it's not spring-loaded. I can have the cannons up or down regardless of how I have the rest of the wings position. That was one of the things that drove me crazy about the original toy. Don't get me wrong, play gimmicks are fun, but at the end of the day, when you're also a collector and you care more about screen accuracy than you do about play features, it's gonna drive you crazy that 
every time you want to go move the wing, it's going to fall down or these cannons are going to flip out on you when you don't want them to. And unless you, you know, crane or angle pieces a certain way to where they won't budge or move or it's just going to look weird and out of place. It's something that always drove me crazy about the original toy. And as cool as those play features are and were, at the end of the day, this this is the product that I wanted as a collector more than I wanted this. And I'm still happy I have this. This is still great. But this is the figure I've been waiting on that I didn't know I've wanted this whole time. He is fully articulated. Head is on a ball joint. Fully articulated shoulders, although you're going to have to move the wing just a little bit to get all that clearance there in and out. You can also move that tiger head a little bit, but you're going to end up undoing some things in order to do that because it's pretty stiff and it is supposed to be kind of in a specific spot. So, I mean, there you go. Right, right, right there is about right. Same with over here. You do have full range of articulation over here as well. And then you have this little piece that comes up so you get that side articulation in the shoulder movement. Upper bicep there, single jointed elbow there. No wrist swivel on either arm. Also, mostly due to transformation. The wings, got there right at the base of the back. Right here, up and down. The cannons, which I demonstrated earlier, do flip out. And you have either the tri-barreled machine gun cannons or the, you know, heavy cannon barrel right there as well, which is very cool looking. And you have these feather blades, much like Silverbolt has, and they made a play feature for it with the original Tiger Hawk where he could fire some of his feathers as missiles. I don't recall him ever firing any of his feathers in the Beast Wars cartoon at any point, but it was a cool play feature on the toy. And I like how they kind of updated it for this toy as not necessarily a fireable missile, but as a new melee weapon that he can wield in either hand. Uh, waist articulation, hips, nice ratcheting on the forward and back, side to side, upper thigh, single jointed knees, side to side on the ankles, forward and back on this heel, mostly due to transformation. And that's pretty much it for robot mode articulation. And since I mentioned his rival, here he is next to the Transmetal 2 Dragon Megatron. So you can see them side by side so they can face off in their legendary battle. And then, you know, Megatron can just use the nemesis. <laughs> use the nemesis and win. Spoiler alert, that's how he wins. Transformation is actually pretty similar to the original toy, but as they updated the original toy to be more screen accurate, they also updated the transformation because there's a few more moving parts and more detail on this version. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by bringing up this section, which we already, I guess, kind of did in a way undo these talons that are over his shoulders, untab all these shoulders on the outside, untab all these other bits right here, and untab and pull apart these legs like so. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to bring these chest sections down and to the side and kind of out of our way. And then we're going to, from around the shoulders, here we go. Bring down these little bird legs here. Untab this backpack section right here with the wings on it. And then we can start actually putting pieces into place. So rotate this section just to the side like so. You want it so the tiger head is on the upper section with the wings still to the back and where the other arm is to the lower section because this is gonna be part of his beast mode chest section, okay? Next, we're going to fold that head down in here into that bird waist on the back and we are going to rotate 
oh, that cat head forward just a little bit so that we can get this other arm into place. And before we can do that, go ahead and open that panel there, fold in that fist, close that arm, rotate this. There is a rectangular peg hole right here that's going to plug right on to the back of his wings like so. And at this point, let's just go ahead and adjust that head up a little. We want it to where you can close that panel and have the head sitting forward. And that's pretty much it in position. Next, we're gonna bring this down just a little bit, rotate this chest section. And there is a little tab on that. You're going to push the tiger head down. That's going to click into place Make sure you re-tab anything else you might have undone at this point. And we're pretty much done with the tiger head for now. Next, let's go ahead and bring up what was the robot mode legs, much like on the original toy release. Those are gonna come all the way up here to the front. Go ahead and rotate these sections in. And we don't want the arms moving out like this while he's in tiger mode. You're going to soft click those hips into place on both sides. Then what we're going to do is we're going to rotate forward that knee as far as we can get it. Open this little back section, bring that all the way back. And much like the first figure, just rotate that front foot out. Now, unlike the first figure, the cat mode feet don't really fold into the leg very well, as you can see, because we have this whole back claw just hanging out the, the front of the shin here. So it does look a little out of place on this release. And that's, that's one of the few kind of not upgrades of that version to this version. Go ahead and arrange those up to the front. We're not gonna tab anything in yet because we still gotta move some other stuff around. So bring this rear section up now that we have room for it. It's going to tab right in to the back right here. And then we're just gonna keep these other legs out of the way while we finish off this little lower arm section. Go ahead and take this fold in that hand. You can leave this on here where the hand is, but we're gonna take it off just for right now. And then we're going to collapse this other arm all the way in as far as we can get it. And then there's a little tab right here that's gonna tab into the inside of the bicep and secure that section all into place. Then we can bring this section down, which is going to tab over that other little orb-like section. Make sure that this isn't caught underneath it. And now we can tab in those legs. So there's a little tab right here along with some tabs up here. You're gonna make sure that that peg just goes right into that inner socket right there. So that's one leg done. Do the same thing over here, get that one lined up and tabbed in. And once that's tabbed in and secured, now we can just adjust the legs into the position we want to have them displayed in. And of course the wings as well. Oh, and uh, we can put that back where it was. I was just taking that off to demonstrate. There we go. And there is Tiger Hawk in his Tiger Hawk mode. Now, as far as his Tiger Hawk mode goes, aside from, you know, the, the rear claw or toe or whatever hanging out the back on or hanging off the shin of the beast mode here, the only other thing I kind of dislike about his alt mode is I don't like how he's just looking down. I don't like that he's not looking straight forward. Now, if you kind of pose him at a little bit of an angle where he's pushing himself up a little bit on those hind legs, then yeah, he's looking kind of straight ahead, but not as much as I would like. Now, of course, you can also 
you know, have his cannons facing forward. Um, you can have the wings facing forward, like he's getting ready to fire some, you know, feather missiles that this figure doesn't have anymore. You can have him in flight getting ready to pew pew at Megatron or whoever else he's getting ready to fight. And it's still a really great looking Tiger Hawk. Honestly, I think the robot mode is a little bit stronger than the Tiger Hawk mode visually, however, but this is still a really, really good update to this character in my opinion. And real quick for comparison, here is Tiger Hawk in his Tiger Hawk mode next to the original Tiger Hawk in his Tiger Hawk mode. So you can see the two side by side and they both look really awesome side by side. And this is one of the things I was talking about. So if you have his wings in the down position like this, you can't have his wings flared out to the side like this. Otherwise that, that happens, you know, and great play feature, you know, fun. But at the same time, if, if I want to display the wings like this, you can't because of, because of the way the can is locked into place. Now, if you bring them up, you don't have that pressure on the springs, so you can fold them up, but you have to have the wings kind of up at a slight angle at the very least. Otherwise, you know, those cannons are gonna fold open. Now you can lock them into place with these, but then you're left with having his wings kind of up like this, which isn't bad, but if you want them down, which you can push this trigger to release them, that flips up these and gets ready to unlock the cannons. And the only thing stopping them is this. Now you can also rotate these to the front. This was actually a really, really cool kind of gimmick. Um, I, I like that they made it, you know, manual. That way you could get other positions out of the wings with the new one, because you can't just have the wings flared out like this, unfortunately, because of the spring loaded mechanism within it, but it was still a cool thought and a cool idea. Don't get me wrong. This is an awesome, awesome toy. It still is an awesome, awesome toy. Just as a collector, as somebody who focuses on screen accuracy over play features, this is a better toy. At least it is in my opinion. And another really cool thing that this toy did that the new one doesn't is you've got the Hawk helmet. The Hawk helmet is awesome. I miss the Hawk helmet. I loved it on this one. Maybe there'll be an upgrade kit or add on that somebody will do where they give the Hawk helmet to the new Tiger Hawk. But having the little uh, headband there is what Tiger Hawk had on screen. Not a Hawk helmet, even though the Hawk helmet is clearly cooler, I will admit. He didn't have that. But the Tiger head sculpt was pretty good on the original toy too. And just like on the original, you can open the jaw on the new one, but you can't articulate the tongue on the new one. So that is another cool thing on the original that the new one doesn't have. However, I still kind of like the new one more. Also for comparison, here is Tiger Hawk next to Tigatron. So you can see the two side by side. And here he is next to Air Razor. We'll go ahead and go ahead and flare out go ahead and flare out those wings for Tiger Hawk 2 actually. So that uh, we can we can compare how much wider that wingspan is and that wingspan is so awesome. Love love the wings on Tiger Hawk. Always thought they were super cool. There is with Air Razor side by side. And since they're already flared out, perfect timing, here we have him next to the Legacy Trans Metal 2 Megatron. Oh, this is so cool. I Hopefully Optimal is coming soon. Now, we really got to get an updated Optimal Optimus. The Power of the Primes one was cool. I liked the feature that they were going where you got the earlier version of the character turning into the prime version of the character, right? And we got, you know, Optimus Primal turning into Optimal Optimus. 
but we need a new optimal optimus to go with transmetal 2 megatron and tiger hawk here because this this is awesome these these are really great updates and if they updated these guys as well as they did i can only imagine how awesome a true update optimal optimus would be and i honestly can't wait for that so hopefully that's coming at some point in the near future guys thank you so much for tuning into today's review featuring the new transformers legacy united tigatron this figure is so so awesome a fantastic update I love how screen accurate this figure is. And while there were some really cool play features that didn't quite carry over from the first toy, the play features I didn't like from the first toy also didn't carry over. And I kind of care about that a little bit more, but that's just me. I want to know your thoughts about the new Tiger Hawk down in the comments below. Like and subscribe and follow us on social media for more. Stay tuned for more Transformers reviews and check out some of the other content that we've done here on Bay 12. Like and subscribe and check out our sister channel and website, CoolToyReview.com. Check the website daily for daily toy news, reviews, and more, and the YouTube channel out for that awesome video content. If you like Star Wars, check out our other sister website, RebelScum.com. There's daily Star Wars fan-related content on rebelscum.com including toy reviews so make sure you check out the rebelscum.com youtube channel for those star wars toy reviews and rebel scum is hosting the first official rebel scum con this summer june 27th through the 30th at the allen convention center in the dallas area go to rebel scum conventions with an s.com once again that's rebel scum conventions Dot com to book your experience today and attend Rebel Scum Con. If you're looking for some awesome toys, collectibles, and other merch, come by our physical location inside Order 66 Multiverse in the shops at Willowbin Mall in Plano, Texas, which also houses Order 66 Toys, the world's official all-collectible Star Wars toy store. And in case you're not local, they go live every single Friday night on the Order 66 Toys Facebook page at 7 p.m. Central Time in the ship all around the world. Last but not least, check out our free archival website, collectorsoracle.com. There are currently Star Wars toy and collectible lines archived on there. However, we are in negotiations with other toy companies and brands at the moment to add more to Collectors Oracle in the near future, and it's all absolutely free to use. We'll see you guys later. We'll see you another time. Transform and roll out. Game over, man. Game over.